All right, guys, we're back with a good one. Um, I was asked to make a video regarding the practices of collecting debts, why you shouldn't pay them. And again, I just did a, you know, a YouTube um, search and there's some new videos from these guys and they're saying, you know, pay these, uh, pay the collection agencies, do these pay for delete models. Uh, do these pay for deletion things. First of all, pay for deletion is the weakest, the weakest strategy to remove a collection off a credit report. First of all, pay for deletion rarely, rarely works, okay? It does not work. Name one person that has successfully paid off a collection and tried to settle for the balance less than owed by making a call. That's rarely gonna work, okay? Um, and in doing that, you're going to reset the statute. Yes, there's statutes to debt collections, and I'll go into that on the board here. So by paying off a collection, you could reset the statute limitations, and you could verify that the debt is legally yours. Okay, so there's a lot of consumer rights that you have that can basically disprove that debt, and in a nutshell, throw it out in lamest terms. Okay. And then again, I don't want to mislead you, and I'm not. I'm going to be very thorough. And the thing is, all these people on YouTube make these quick videos on how to do very detailed things. And the problem with making a short three-minute video is that you're going to miss all the details, the most important critical aspects of, you know. That's why lawyers do consultations with people and get the full details of the case and not just make a video saying, oh, we can help you here, we can help you there. Well, in my experience, basically, we've been able to erase debt from our clients, remove it. Why? There's something called the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act, okay? So let's go to the board, and in order to understand debt and how it's assessed and how it's collected legally and both illegally, we're gonna to have to understand where it comes from in the first place. So what we have here, we have TransUnion, we have Equifax and Experian. These are data houses, these are data services, data servers that host your data, your financial information, your payment history, everything pretty much about you financially in terms of having a contract with a financial institution, including a bank, okay? There's the banking committee, there's um, check systems, there's early warning systems, there's um, the Fair Credit Billing Act, there's you know, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, all of these methods, all of these laws that these agencies have to follow, which is TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, okay? So then there's you over here, and then there's the original creditor, okay? The original creditor can be a, a, <clears throat> a bank, it's obviously a financial institution, it could be a nonprofit creditor, um, uh, what is it, a uh, credit union, I mean. It could be a auto dealer. It could be, it could be anything like that. It could be a jewelry store. It could be a bank, a credit card company. Okay, um, so that's what the original creditor is. And then there's you, and you and the original creditor make a contract to make payments and to fulfill a note, okay? And that contract is reported to the big three. Or, I mean, not the, not the contract, but the payment history, okay? When you default or come serious delinquent or unlikely to pay the debt, the original creditor has the right to charge off the account at, at their discretion. And um, to understand what a charge off is, we must, we must look at the legal definition. A charge off is a debt that is permissible, that is a permissible business tax deduction and a, or a, or a non-business tax deduction. So what that means, the original creditor gets a tax credit for writing off the loss because they didn't receive those billables. And so how could they be taxed for the note that they signed to the debtor, which is you if you're watching this video or maybe your client if you're a wannabe credit repair guy and you're the same guy that I watched earlier today uh, that says, pay, pay your collections off. Well. This video is for you and this, is, this video is for people that think that paying collections is the, the best idea. It's not, you never wanna pay, like, that's like raising the right white flag. 
when you go to war with someone, why would you raise the white flag? You think you can't, you think, um, you think you can't beat them? Well, I can arm you with the tools and how to beat them in this video, okay? So you have two things on your credit report. Remember, your credit report is reported that payment history from that original creditor, okay? And on your credit report, you will have two types of derogatory account types. One would be a charge-off and another would be a collection. Many might say, oh, if it's a collection, then I owe it. Well, more often than not, the collection is actually a charge-off. Remember, a, a charge-off is a debt that is a permissible business tax deduction. So the creditor wouldn't think twice to just write it off and not collect the debt. And first of all, it makes the debt collection invalid in the first place. Why? Because you have this wonderful thing right here called the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act, which was unified by section 1692 of Public Law 95 through 109. You gotta read this, okay? You gotta read this section. And what that is, it's a law passed by Congress, not just by Congress, your federal government, okay? Let me go over here, okay? 1692 of Public Law 95 through 109. So this is an act passed by Congress, the highest form of government along with the executive branch and judicial branch. Our government has three branches, okay? Legislative, you know, executive and judicial. All right, so <clears throat> in case you guys don't know. And uh, basically what this is, is an amendment to the Consumer Credit Protection Act. Remember, the Consumer Credit Protection Act was designed was basically in congru congruent with the Fair Credit Reporting Act, okay, back in the 70s. Um, that makes certain debt collection practices illegal, okay? So you have this wonderful law right here, okay? You have this wonderful law, the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, that will protect you, okay, from these evil. You see, that's a devil? It's the face of a devil. These unauthorized third parties, okay? Often in the dispute process, you might have gotten a letter stating with the information provided, it suggests that there's an unauthorized third party working on your credit. No, 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 no. Whether you hire someone or do it, do it on your own, you're going to get those letters. But let me tell you who's an authorized third party. It's the debt collectors, okay? The debt collectors would basically report the collection to your credit report, okay? And the thing about debt, co debt collectors is that the, the account must include the original creditor information. And more often than not, they're going to leave that ambiguous, anonymous, and they're just going to be vague about it. And it's not going to be 100% legible or 100% accurate. So there's your angle. That's one of the many angles of attack. Remember, when you go to war, when you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these um, agencies, these unauthorized third party debt collectors, original creditors. You have to have more than one strategy. You can't just have one angle and say, you're gonna pay these guys off. You don't have to pay them off and good luck paying them off, okay? So <clears throat> basically, um, the reason why this was put into place is because, you know, there's about $50, $50 billion of debt nationwide and the government pretty much, and, and since this was, mandated in the 70s, okay, I think 1977, um, there's been debt since then, okay? The government has to basically, of course, this is the current or most recent um, findings of the debt, 50 billion in, in consumer credit card debt. Government has to basically and put these practices in act and you and I have to do that as well for my clients and yourself if you're watching this video and you have collections on your credit report, okay? So these rules come into play to pretty much make this number go down, okay? Because if you invalidate the debt, it actually helps the books of these, of, these, um, of these creditors and whatnot too as well. And it clears up the industry, so it's good. So these laws are put into play by you know, Congress and the executive branch and judicial branch to help you. Don't think that you're just, you don't have a leg to stand on, okay? So the creditor, the, um, the bureaus have to follow your consumer rights. Your consumer rights, you know, Fair Credit Reporting Act, Fair Credit Billing Act, um, original creditors have to follow business and professions codes. Those vary through state and municipalities, um, UCCs, um, 
universal commercial code that pretty much um, controls the, the contract laws. And so more often than not, you can find um, violations within those UCC findings. And how would you find that? You're gonna have to understand, um, probably watch recorded depositions of leaked information from cases that have, um, that have gone by where consumers have filed class action lawsuits or not usually they're class action because when you're dealing with the business, there's usually a group of people that, uh, and it's not everyone, it's just a group of people that were aware of those violations. They went to court against those creditors and then they got an award, okay? They received compensation to some degree, they got an award and the creditor, usually it's against the creditor, Bank of America, Capital One. If you can just look at the court findings of all these case laws, and you could find these cases where, you know, the consumers won. You have to look at that, but do you have the time to do that? No, probably don't. But Pinnacle, we do. Why? Because we have a system, CDIA, that's an agency, that integrates with our system called ACAP. That stands for Automatic Credit Analytic Technology. It's basically a proprietary service uh, that we have here that um, allocates all the public data, and this is sufficient enough. All the data here, and also the, the CFPB, um, these are federal agencies that have a list of all the disputes that won, and um, both public and private we have access to. Private, of course, through our own um, sources, um, like our own in-house clients. We have those records in our, in, our, um, in our databases and stuff like that. So we can kind of pretty much um, predict the outcome of a dispute process. So we'll cut the dispute, the dispute process in, in, in less than half because you have the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act, okay? And here's the thing. With the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act, usually the original creditor or the unauthorized third party, the debt collector, would make a violation through TCPA, okay? Telecommunications Privacy Act. Okay, and that's basically the method they use to call. The, me the method they use to contact you, I should say contact you. They would do the mail, email, call. Now if they call you, they're actually illegally soliciting a business service because by legal definition, the TCPA um, disallows or makes it illegal for businesses to solicit to your personal phone number. And so more often than not, if you understand the depositions and the case laws of these creditors being sued, it was usually because they made a TCPA violation. And that, would, that led to the uh, factual findings of evidence of FDCPA, which enforced their class, a, a class action lawsuit. And then if you look at the cases of all the creditors that lost, like Capital One, Bank of America, blah, 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 and paid an, ungodful law, a, an ungodly amount of money, and it's more than one account. It's more than one charge against them, more than one violation. They just tacked on so many different things, you know? And it's, it's beautiful because a person uh, in a business like, like ours can basically integrate all of that information, save you time. I can literally, that's why on our website, it says put your, your credit karma account or you can submit your credit report. Um, and when you submit the credit report, it plugs into our system automatically and we created the strategy for you. And we assess it and we make it simple and we, say, and we can see clearly what needs to be done. That's why, we're, that's why we're able to have a super duper high success ratio. And if you watched the video prior to this one, you would see a lot of the results. Look at all the videos that we, that we posted with our client testimonials and you're gonna see a consistent um, success rate. Okay, so um, this is pretty much how you would invalidate the debt, okay? And if you want more information on the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act, Pub Law 95 through 109, go to governmentinfo.gov, okay? And um, remember, you can have a charge off on your credit report or a collection, and you might see the collection and be like, oh crap, um, it's gonna be hard because they're gonna to wanna to collect the debt from you. But no, 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 no. You have to find out, believe me. Well, we can find out if that collection was written off or not. You can too, but if you don't have the skill set, then you can't. 
Well, you're not going to, but if you do know how to do it, it's, it's a little complicated, but it's not difficult for us. We do it here for you, okay? So if you can find that the collection from the original creditor was in fact a charge off, then they're in big trouble. They don't have a leg to stand on. And so that's how you pretty much knock them out of the game, okay? And if it's a charge off, it's obvious. They've received a tax, uh, a tax benefit for this loss. They're not going to collect the debt. And there's some other guys on YouTube saying, oh, uh, if you dispute the account, then they're just gonna come back and sue you. Well, that's not really likely because they have no grounds to sue you because they're not legal they're not legally able to collect the debt from you in the first place. You can't play that game. If you play that game, the judge is not gonna do the homework for you. The judge is supposed to um, assess the facts, right? And they make a verdict based upon that very quickly. It's not a long drawn out process. And uh, there's a uh, civil lawsuit minimum of $20,000. Unless you have a $20,000 debt for one account, they're not going to hire a lawyer to sue you. It takes time to do so in the first place. And then it's a matter of jurisdiction, okay? You put them on a wild goose chase, okay? Because jurisdiction is very important because where was the contract signed? But the financial center of, let's say, Capital One or Bank of America could be in this state and it's them going after you or that collection agency that limited liability partnership, that debt collector in another state that is trying to sue you, but they can't because they don't have the jurisdiction. They have to come to your state and do that. Do you understand? And there's also something called a statute of limitations. Okay. You need to know your state's statute of limitations. That's another thing. That debt could be four years old and it's out of the statute of of limitations to collect that debt in the first place. That's one angle too. Remember, there's so many angles that we have. You can't just focus on one angle. And then you could know all this. You can know about the FDCPA, Fair Credit Building Act, UCC, the TCPA, okay? You can learn, you can know about all of this, but how are you going to present it in a quick and effective manner? Are you gonna send it to the bureaus? Are you gonna send it to the bureaus? Are you gonna do that, okay? Or where are you gonna send it to? So that's why people pay us because we can do all that for them and save them time. Okay, so don't pay off collections. I hope I made this as simple as I could be. You know, you have the Fair Credit Billing Act, which basically um, invalidates the debt in the first place. Okay, now the FDCPA, okay, makes, makes their act of collecting that debt with serious liability and fines, like $1,000 per violation. Every time they called you, it's a violation of the TCPA. They do not want to go to court for the TCPA. That is a federal law broken. This is a federal law broken too, but this is the big one here, okay? Calling you at any time that's inconvenient, um, you know, your phone, email, all that. Um, and here's the thing you would get a copy of um, the, the debt or the original creditor. They're supposed to send it to you. I mean, well, they're supposed to have it. They're not supposed to send it to you because it's against the law. But when they do send you the letter in the mail or the phone, okay, they're going to try to shield themselves by saying, this, is for, this phone call is for the sole purpose of collecting the debt as if that is going to protect him legally. No, you're illegally soliciting a business service meaning they're doing you a service. Actually, they are doing your service, but a disservice. Technically, it's a service because their service is to conveniently call you, but it's not convenient for you to get a call for you to settle or pay that debt because the original creditor wrote it off somewhere. You can't prove it because you don't have the skill set to do so. That's why you hired me in the first place. So um, that would basically show their cards. Remember, it's like poker. They're showing you your cards there. The email that they send you, it would have the original creditor there. And then you could find if there's any discrepancies or violations of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, Fair Credit Billing Act, Fair Credit Transaction Act, and so on and so forth. Okay, and, and the same with mail. They send it to you in writing. It's And the verbiage of the writing too could basically be a violation of the FDCPA and also the TCPA, but this is the biggest one here. 
Okay, so you're gonna have to find these violations and then crack the codes to just basically knock them out of the game. Don't play that telephone game. Don't do the mail system that doesn't work. So um, that's basically what we have here. I hope you guys learn. Um, don't be dumb. Don't pay a collection, okay? Pay for a deletion doesn't work, okay? It just doesn't work. So, still a little on, okay, so 24 minutes. So if you watch this video to the end, I have a bonus for you. I have, a, I have something for you, okay? So let me erase this first. If you have a collection on your credit report, I want you to go to Pinnacle, Credit, Repair, Com. Submit your credit report, submit your full name, phone number, submit information, and then we'll go ahead and assess your report for you. If you watch this video to the end, we are doing a 50% off promotion. 50% off to hire me personally, okay? Forgive me for my ugly handwriting, which is normally $1,500 to $2,500, okay? But that's now $750 to $1,500, okay? $1,500. Now, go ahead and text me if you have any questions. 858-252-6053, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. If, if hopefully you want to join the program, there's a 50% off promotion. Take advantage of it, and I'll see you on the next one.